Today we're gonna take a look at another Pico CTF challenge. We're going straight for maximum points this time. So go grab a cup of coffee or your favorite beverage and enjoy the journey into the depth of 4 and 6. We're gonna take a look at uh, Dear Diary in the 4 and 6 category. And that is worth 400 points. So let's see what the challenge says. Uh, if you can find the flag on this disk image, we can close this case for good. Download the disk image here and it gives us a link, right? Um, I went ahead and already grabbed the um, file and I've already um, extracted uh, the image itself. So let's see what we have to work with. Right, okay, uh, wow, one gigabyte file. Um, as per usual, let's see what we have. So it says boot sector partition one, something, something, partition two, and it gives us the geometry and partition three again with the geometry. Okay, so uh, looks like it's a um, full disk image. It's not just the partition image that you typically encounter in these sort of uh, challenges. It's a full disk image with uh, three partitions, right? So let's see if we can Uh, okay, let's do sudo. Okay, so there are indeed three partitions in our image. Uh, the first one over here, this flag image one, appears to be a typical Linux boot partition, right? The second one is a uh, swap. And I am assuming the third one is the data partition, right? The, the main slash partition. So uh, what we're going to do is we are going to actually carve each partition into its own file and then work on that file. So the, the input file is going to be disk flag image, output file is gonna be, let's call it this flag image one, right? We're gonna use that label. Uh, block size is gonna be uh, 512, I believe. Yes, 512. So we're gonna use a block size of exactly the sector size so that we can work with uh, sectors directly we don't need to do any calculations and anything else right so we have the number of sectors and the first sector is 248 right so we have to specify a skip value of uh, 248 so that's going to carve out the first uh, disk right and it's taken exactly the number of sectors we said. Now for the second one, we're going to keep everything the same and we're just going to change the um, count with the number of sectors we've seen there. And for skip, we are going to skip whatever it says here. And for the third one, Basically the same thing, number of sectors and sectors to skip. So now we've ended up with, oof, I forgot to, hold on, I messed up. Let me rerun that. I forgot to rename the, uh, the image. That is my bad. So over here should be flag image three. There we go. Let's give it a second and we're going to end up with the three um, partitions carved out as individual files. So again, let's run the file command on the first one. 
Okay. Okay, it's correctly recognized the second one as a uh, swap file. And the third one, that is a uh, Linux partition, right? So typically the boot partition could be um, in MS-DOS format. So what I'm going to do first is I wonder, because normally like the swap partition is where stuff that can't fit in the main memory uh, can be dumped into, right? And beginning your analysis with the swap partition uh, can uncover uh, interesting uh, strings or other bits of information. So let's run uh, strings on this second partition. Let's see what it comes up with. Okay, that is underwhelming, right? So it's just the swap space to tag that it's normally found in um, a, a regular partition. Okay, let's take a look at the first uh, partition. Uh, so what we can do when you have like a partition in a file, you can mount using the loopback device, right? And you tell it that's the source and then you give it the mount point. So let's say mount one. Let's run, uh, see what it says. So do uh, write access unavailable, cannot proceed, try mounting with no load. Okay, not a problem. Let's give it a no load option. Sorry, no space here. And it succeeded. Let's see what we can uncover. So this looks all like a typical uh, boot disk. Nothing out of the ordinary immediately jumps at me. Let's, um, you know what? Most of, most of this um, ending in C32, those are all binary files, right? Let's see if there is something hidden in um, the text files like xlinux, alpine linux. Okay, so uh, we figured out that this has been um, extracted from an alpine linux installation. Okay, doesn't immediately help us with anything, but maybe down the road. Okay, let's do the same. Let's mount the third one, because remember the second is the um, swap partition. Okay, so the, as we guessed initially, this is the root partition. Uh, let's see what we find in here. Nothing in home. Okay, let's take a look at the root. Okay, let's do sudo. Secrets, secrets, and ash history. Okay, that looks pre promising. Force weight in Karnas file, it's all in the name. Okay, and so those two have zero bytes, right? Apparently. So we won't see any data in those by normal means. Uh, let's see. Uh, if we can um, display the other files. Let's see what's in here. Uh, ls and then force weight. Okay, what's in the force weight file? So that's in secret secrets. And then uh, force weight. Uh, sleep then. Okay, not much gone here with. We know there is some interesting data on this disk somewhere but it doesn't appear to be accessible by normal uh, means. So what I'm thinking is let's do sudo unmount. And 
and let's explore the disk at hex level let's let's look at the sectors themselves right how do we do that well hex dump right and let's see to display basically we want the left side to be the hex code values and on the right side uh, we want uh, the characters and that's the mi minus C option. If you are not familiar with this, you can do uh, tag tag minus help and you can see minus C is canonical, right? Hex plus ASCII display, which is exactly what we want. So minus C and we're going to give it um, disk flag image three. And because it's a very large file, we're going to pipe it to less, right? And now we can see, we can navigate the file, right? We can go for, we can go back and we see the data, the offset um, over here on the left side, uh, over here in the middle is the data, right? And here on the right side is a visual representation, right? A human readable representation. So uh, what should we do with this? Because obviously this is a huge file. Well, I'm thinking since we have that uh, innocuous file .txt that was zero bytes, I'm wondering if the file structure has somehow been uh, manipulated to appear it's a zero byte file, but in fact it has some data on disk. So to do that, we're going to search, right, forward slash and let's search for Eno. We don't need to search for the whole file because the shorter the string, the faster the search goes. Okay, so force weight, innocuous file, it's all in the name. Okay, let's see if we find any more occurrences of this. Pressing N will search for the next one, right? And you can see it searching because um, it doesn't doesn't show the characters here, right? Now it stops searching. So it found another occurrence, but it doesn't appear there's anything interesting over here. Let's keep searching. Let's see if we um, uncover um, other bits of data. So another occurrence of innocuous file.txt and look, this looks like the beginning of the flag. Let's uh, split this vertically. Uh, and let's call it flag.txt. And let's start copying stuff from here and pasting it over here. And now let's keep searching. Another occurrence of innocuous file. And look at that, it matches. So basically what they did when they created this challenge is they've created multiple files named innocuous file.txt with different contents, deleted them, and then created the next one. But those bits of data that was deleted aren't actually removed from the disk. They just appear deleted. And if you look at the disk in raw form, like we're doing right now, you can uncover. Okay, let's see what is the next bit of useful information. I believe that's the one. Right? And let's keep searching. So now we have this. And, and for the next match, copy that, paste it here. Next one, five underscore eight. Next one.
Okay. This looks like a flag, but let's keep searching. Let's see if there is more. It's all in the name, right? So you see here, it's all in the name that we saw initially. And one more search doesn't find anything, right? So uh, let's copy the flag, make sure that it actually works, make sure that that's the flag. And try and paste it here, submit the flag. And there we go. Right? So even though it was a harder challenge, um, just by using basic tools that are on any system like hex dump and less uh, we were able to solve this uh, this challenge so this proves that you don't always need fancy tools sometimes it's possible just by using very basic tools in a smart way to uh, solve these kind of challenges all right i hope you enjoyed it as much as i did and i will see you all for the next one. Bye-bye.